Hey there, my name is Malte. I'm super excited to be here today to talk about it's time for modular product management. Thanks for Product School for hosting this amazing event and inviting me. And before I dive into the details, I would like to give you a few facts about me. So I'm the co-founder, CEO and CPO at Airfocus. We are the world's first flexible and modular product management platform. More on this a bit later. And I'm a product enthusiast myself, so I love building product and user experiences. And this is also how I stumbled across the problems we are solving today. And I'm also a father of two. So I have a three and a half year old daughter and a five months old son. And yeah, let's dive into the details. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about the challenges of product management in delivering real value. And I'm going to list a few of the things that we found uh, in one of our recent surveys. Very interesting stuff. Then we're going to look at what is modern PM. Um, super briefly, um, just um, a few hot takes on yeah, what defines um, a good uh, approach to product management. And then we're going to look at the accelerated needs for modular product management tools. And then, surprise, surprise, we're also going to look at Airfocus and I will show you around the product uh, on a little walkthrough. So let's start with the very first topic, the challenges of product management in delivering real value. So here are some brand new stats from our latest state of product management survey. So the biggest problems and you see in the headline here um, that we identified six core challenges, but like not all of them or most of them are not really new. They're essentially confirming what we all know, but I still think it's super helpful because it shows you again, like what you sh should think about and where you should put the focus. And if that's not um, happening in your job right now, uh, you should maybe um, try change that and find ways to um, get back to the to, to the essences. So, what are the biggest challenges? So, 33% of the people that we surveyed said that they struggle defining a strong and well communicated product strategy. So that makes complete sense. Product management is an art and and a science, and you want to be strategic, especially in a world where there's so much competition and so much knowledge freely available. So you want to be strategic in what you do and you need to most and, most and foremost, like bring stuff together from, from all these different areas, be it customer feedback, be it uh, strategic insights that you have, be it um, additional uh, things that um, other people in your company might contribute to, to the strategy. So you need to bring it together and write it down. Then secondly, 32% um, reported that they're really struggling communicating roadmap and decisions and, and aligning people around uh, the product roadmap and the company and product goals. Thirdly, 30% of the people stated that they are struggling understanding what the customers want. And this makes like, I actually think this number is much higher, but um, let's say, let, let, let's, let's see. People don't talk enough to customers and then sometimes they don't listen well. And it's not because they're stupid or they don't try hard. It's just super difficult. And you need to develop a skill to, to actually listen and then understand what is meant. And um, this just takes time and, and, and you also need to dedicate time. And uh, we see um, a lot of our customers, and to be honest, also um, us internally at Airfocus struggle with this a lot all the time. I mean, it's, 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 it's really a big, big problem and it's not new. So 29% of the people state that they need to become more efficient at delivering more features more rapidly. And this is one that I would like to understand a bit better, but not on this talk today. So um, I know that many product managers are stuck at feature factories where they're expected to pump out uh, more and more features. But I'm uh, really convinced that it should be more about the outcomes and a bit more on this um, on one of the next slides. 
but you want to be careful not um, just looking at the number of features and the the the, the, the veloc velocity when when looking at uh, like what you eventually want to achieve here. So 26% name the communication and alignment of different stakeholders as a as a core challenge. And again, this makes total sense. And I will show you a screen that I really love that summarizes what product management actually is, and it, this gives you like clear indication um, why this is such a such a hot uh, challenge. And then equally, 26% struggle like prioritizing the right initiatives on the roadmap level, and then uh, one level lower, um, what opportunities to focus on. Yeah, and this is uh, Air Focus core competence territory. Uh, we started as a prioritization tool a few years back, and we really, really, really um, try to understand uh, prioritization. And um, I completely get that. Like prioritization and road mapping, those are the, the two biggest challenges of PMs. And really, all of the product teams struggle with it in one way or another. Um, but yeah, like uh, to me, the surprising thing here is the... Uh, n not so much surprising it's more like um, the, the the highlight topic here that these teams struggle with with the product strategy and and all the underlying topics so let's start by defining modern product management I think that's that's very important that we all have like a a combined understanding of what modern or good product management is. So first and foremost, it's about understanding the importance of outcomes over outputs. So it's less about building features and more about delivering products that solve real world problems. And also as part of our state of product management report, we I defend, identified that 40% state that growing needs uh, to become more outcome focused. So I think there's realization now that this is important and that you need to move away from feature factory uh, thinking and like getting there, getting to a real outcome driven product management approach is, is uh, it's not easy, but more and more teams are going that direction. So then the second point of modern product management is to invest in discovery and experimentation. So ask any PM and they will tell you that they should focus more on talking to users and understanding the problem, the markets, then run experiments around different solutions and coming back to that um, challenges part on the previous slide, um, really working on product strategy and bringing it all together. So what we also see is that there is um, still a transformation between waterfall approach to this truly agile approach, which includes continuous discovery. And a lot of the teams, they claim they are agile, but we also see um, a lot of um, fake agile or stuff in the middle, which is not always bad. Um, it really depends on the company and the situation. Um, but I think there's now mutual understanding that um, a, an agile approach to tackling problems is, is the way to go. So the fourth point here is product first. So this move to product-led growth strategies, and this is very close to, to, to product management in, in that you try to build user experiences that um, really are built um, around the product and not so much around like um, sales and marketing. So product-led growth essentially is a business methodology in which user acquisition, expansion, conversion, and retention are the, the primary drivers and they are um, all driven by the product itself. So the product is, is doing all of that heavy lifting. Um, and to, to, to sum it up, a product-led growth product um, or business is actually able to to just live with the product. You, you could probably pause um, CS, sales, marketing, all of that. And um, if it's a really awesome product um, with self-serve built in, you will be able to, to, to survive with it in, in a list little thought experiment, of course. Yeah. 
So yeah, and like our our studies um, is all about uh, product led growth, um, the realization of companies and PMs that that this is a, a trend that's here to stay, and yeah, product product teams need to put more focus on 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 how to get there. So let's talk about the accelerated need for modular product management tools um, that fit your uniqueness. So. This is um, like uh, my special topic that I uh, I have been thinking about for years, and um, that is really close, obviously, to also what we do here at Air Focus and, and and what what I'm driving here as the CEO and CPO. And as a side note, like COVID has really accelerated all of this. Like previously, we were all in the office all the time, and we were able to. Um, do magic on whiteboards and, and 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 be able to align ourselves on on, on coffee dates and, and all of that. And this has all changed with with COVID. Um, I don't want to go into the details because I, I think we're not only all sick of COVID, but we're also sick of uh, COVID um, literature and COVID tips and so on. At least I'm speaking for myself. So, in order to achieve that modern state of product management that I outlined a bit earlier. Um, and in order to make sure you can define and communicate this clearly uh, articulated product strategy, you, you need a structured way of doing product management and a dedicated product tool that helps you create a single source of truth. And why modular? Um, you will learn a bit later. Um, but be, before we dive into what a product modern product stack is let's look at what product management actually is all about and this is the slide that i referred to a bit earlier um, i love this slide it's i could actually explain it to my mom uh, she immediately would get it so product management is the intersection of customers technology and business and i and i actually will print it out after this meeting and um, put it on the walls here because it's, it's so elegant and it's um, it's giving you focus right like you're here in the middle and your job is to look at all these um, elements here and uh, moderate and, 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 and make decisions that, that account for this complexity. Yeah, and in order to accelerate innovation and in order to create compelling products and drive revenue, you, you need to bring all of that together. Um, so how do product teams um, solve these problems today? So um, I know many of you probably are already on a bit of a mod more modern stack, but a, a lot of product teams still work like this. So they have these complicated Excel spreadsheets where they have their uh, self-built prioritization formulas and uh, where they try to manage um, the entire backlog and the roadmaps. And um, pre-COVID, they were also doing stuff like um, putting stuff on post-it notes here on the side. So you see this. Um, I'm not saying it's it's bad or anything. It's just um, not as efficient and um, effective in today's world. And in, in, since you have to be so fast in innovating and, and uh, producing value for your customers, uh, you can't just afford to lose time and focus and and uh, and create all that waste by by not having tools that are up to date. And this was also confirmed by our um, state of product management survey. So 43% of PMs state that a dedicated PM tool is the answer to most of their challenges. So it makes sense. If you don't have a tool, it's like trying to, to drill a hole with a hammer. Uh, you will eventually fail. And coming back to the challenges again, like you, you want to be strategic and you want to create that space to collaborate around the problems and feedback and prioritization and road mapping and you simply can't do that in, in Jira and this uh, be said Excel spreadsheet. Um, you need a home for your product team to collaborate um, with the team and uh, other stakeholders and other departments and uh, make product management an inclusive um, science or, 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 or art depending how sophisticated you work. And you you want to make sure that it's an inclusive um, workflow and that people get the chance to um, give feedback and be part of your product workflows. 
So that's why product tools have become so important and um, as they help provide a space for, for problem solving. And yeah, this is um, how we see uh, product management um, and, and, and how the product tool um, should function in the in the broader space. So um, sorry, I think the my my camera is overlapping um, the left uh, text here. So it says feedback here on the left. Um, so essentially, there's feedback and data um, on the left that is um, surrounding your company and it's constantly uh, flowing in. And then there is a product management tool in this case, AirFocus, in the middle um, that uh, is kind of taking all these inputs and making sense of it and putting it together, be it um, strategy, prioritization, um, linking feedback to your product items through insights, road mapping, obviously, and then this continuous discovery um, that you do from when stuff arrives um, to taking it through the opportunity pipeline to then handing it over to uh, delivery and making sure you're actually building uh, the right things and solving the right problems. So it's a, it's um, not really a linear flow from the left to the right, uh, but there is also like um, feedback loops in here. Like um, you launch stuff, you get get feedback, you um, inform people who have uh, given feedback about a certain thing. So um, it's a cycle um, uh, that obviously also makes sense in 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 when you when you apply HR thinking here and. Going now back uh, to the point of modularity, um, we learned uh, as part of our survey that um, product managers, um, half of the product managers state that product management tools have poor usability and that they do not fit their unique team needs. And this was really good for me to see because we believe here at AirFocus that companies and products are very different and unique and that also the way companies work um, um, very often makes sense. And there's not always a best way of doing things. Um, there are some things that you can apply and that you should apply, but sometimes there are very good reasons why company work and behave and are structured the way they are. And we are not big fans of um, having a rigid and strict um, system um, that says, hey, there's one way of, of doing product management. Now adapt with your company and your products to this workflow. We think it should be the other way around. A software should adapt to your needs and it should um, kind of be empathetic and try to understand what problem are you trying to solve right now and just give you solutions for this very specific problem. And then when you need more, you just build on top of, uh, of, of this. And this also leads to uh, increased usability and a better user experience because you can start super slim, for example, just with a roadmap. And then um, when you need more like an advanced prioritization system or feedback management and insights, uh, you just build on top of it. And you will see that um, very soon in the demo, um, how this can actually be done in AirFocus. So what is important in a product tool? Uh, it needs to adapt to your unique workflows and it needs to be able to grow with you uh, when you scale. It needs to be easy to use and friendly and it needs to be inclusive. So you wanna make sure that other stakeholders and other product teams um, can work with it. And especially when organizations become more complex and you maybe have multiple teams, multiple products, um, dependencies um, that go across departments. Maybe um, you have um, a whole lot of uh, PMs and multiple head of product management and then a CPO on top of it. Maybe you want to create very specific views where you bring stuff from multiple groups um, on a, to a portfolio view. Like all of that is uh, important and it helps including other people. And our thinking is if, you, if you're inclusive and you bring people together, um, you will make less mistakes and you will um, generate these awesome insights that help you move ahead. So let's now jump into the demo. So AirFocus is the home for products and the people who built them. And we are the first modular product management platform. So 
um, everything you can do with Air Focus, uh, you can do it your way because your way, um, in most cases, makes sense. So you can sign up for a free trial on our website. And um, when you now go into the product, you will see that you find your team name here in the URL. So in our case, it's uh, boom.airfocus.com. So you see, um, since we are Germans, we are super funny here with the, with the name and we took the famous uh, video conferencing tool um, as an example here. So I hope the, the laughing is going on right now on your side. So this is your AirFocus team and this is where you have um, multiple workspaces. And in this case, we have a Room feedback workspace, which you will see a bit later. This is the place where you manage all your feedback and where you can link it to your product work. And then we have the Room video platform workspace, which we will now look at. So this is now the workspace and a workspace essentially consists of items. It consists of different fields um, and in AirFocus we don't have a million systems fields that we force upon you. Uh, you will only see the fields that you need, be it your objectives, your roadmap lane, your labels, uh, some prioritization criteria. And um, aside from the items and the fields, um, we have this concept of views. So you have different views like um, this table view, a prioritization chart, a roadmap, uh, even a release plan that allows you to um, create uh, better um, release uh, documents. And then the fourth component of AirFocus are apps. And apps are essentially these little super tools that help you solve very specific product management problems. And I will talk about these in a second, but let's like first go back to um, this overview here, the table, this is usually used as a product backlog, but everything is customizable. You can have as many views or as little views as you want. Um, it's up to you and your workflows. And uh, we have a great bunch of templates that you can pick from when you, when you create your first workspace. So one of the most powerful apps here at AirFocus is the Priority Ratings app. And this essentially gives you um, custom factors, in this case, value, effort, and revenue, and it gives you custom criteria that underlie these factors. So value consists of reach and impact, and you also see that they are measured in different units, and you have team effort uh, as one of the, the only effort criteria. We also have revenue. And yeah, when you fill out these ratings here, um, you see that our system calculates a priority score and this priority score helps you essentially make better decisions um, or gives you guidance, kind of like a North Star. And tackling this, this uh, very uh, interesting topic of prioritization, right? Like you obviously prioritize always on multiple levels. So prioritization is not just, hey, you have a prioritization scoring system like this one, and then you go through the scores and then you get a prioritization score and done. Um, you just build the things with a high score. This is not how it always works. And it depends a bit on the, on the stage that you're in. And um, especially such a prioritization system makes most sense when, when you know already what the problem is, when you have identified um, rough or uh, detailed solutions of how you want to solve it. And the list is just too long, right? This is a problem that we all face. The list of things that you know you need to build and you kind of have spec'd out is just too long. And then it makes sense to put stuff through this prioritization framework. But on a higher level, obviously you wanna um, have some other prioritization projects, processes around what objectives you actually wanna do. And we're now entering OKR territory and I could talk about this for, for hours, which I'm not gonna do right now, but essentially, um, the important takeaway here is that prioritization happens on multiple levels. Obviously, you want to get your mission and vision right. Then you want to have the right company objectives. Then you want to break these objectives down into team objectives, as you can see here. Um, and then um, when you know um, all of these um, opportunities here and epics and features, they um, 
kind of pay into into these um, objectives um, and you still have too many then a prioritization system like this is super super helpful because it gives you guidance um, on all the views and let's say you have now put all your epics here through this prioritization framework and you have this um, scored list of um, opportunities you can then go to your priority chart which shows you the quick wins and the don't do's and obviously the high value, high effort projects here. And if you scroll over these items, you will find that the push notifications actually is um, a quick win here and you can then um, click on it and find the details here again. And then you can make design, then you can make decisions um, around um, when you want to tackle this. So you see this one is right now in design and um, Maybe you want to put it back into discovery because you learned something or you actually want to move it to development. So this gives you this bird's eye view to make better product decisions. And then obviously um, you have the roadmap and we have different visualizations to create roadmaps and product timelines. And on this um, board view here, you find a now next later roadmap for your um, initiative or initiatives or opportunities. And of course, there are different ways here to, to visualize all of that data, right? Like we have display options that you can actually also save on the view. Uh, don't want to go into details here, but you can um, also show all of these items in a very simplistic non-swim lane way. And you can, um, in a very customize, uh, customizable and user-friendly way, decide actually what you want to, to, to show here to um, to, to, to bring the message across and to do proper communication of your of your roadmap. And all of these views here in AirFocus, you can easily share with others. And going kind of from road mapping to actual release planning, we have a very powerful timeline view, which allows you to uh, do drag and drop and um, create dependencies with these um, very user-friendly and inter if interactive um, animations here or uh, actions. And you can create um, milestones and um, again, change how you want to visualize all of that. And um, it's really up to you how you want to uh, visualize this release plan before you then share it with other stakeholders in your organization. And since we don't have unlimited um, time for this call, I'm just give you like a super rough um, overview about other apps that we have. So we have Priority Poker, which um, is a collaborative way to do these prioritization ratings. So um, just because I think this is a seven, it doesn't mean that seven is the best number for this specific cell here. So what you could do is you could spin up a Priority Poker session and invite other stakeholders to give their inputs on whether this should be a seven or whatever. And uh, our system will then suggest an average that probably is better than the seven that you have here if you have smart people in the meeting. Um, and you can play priority poker in an asynchronous or synchronous way. So in a live session or uh, whenever people have time. And then um, again, overview about the little super tools that we have here. We have the item mirror app and this is a super powerful tool for bigger teams that have a lot of complexity. Essentially, you can create multiple workspaces and show items from one workspace in the in another workspace and then do magic there. And this really helps to uh, foster cross workspace collaboration. And then we have a feedback amps app, which will be soon renamed to forms app. Essentially, it gives you a form on the workspace or the item, uh, even on share links that allows you to collect feedback from, from other people, be it your uh, coworkers or just your customers who access your share link. And yeah, like the, the other app that is super powerful here is the insights app. And I will show you in a second how it works. And just to finish off what you can do in an AirFocus workspace, we have very powerful integrations into your Jira, Trello, Asana, Azure DevOps, Shortcut, GitHub, Zapier, and so on and so on. And with two-way sync and advanced field mapping, and you can essentially um, connect any tool that you already use and build workflows that make sense for you. 
So let's go back to the home view where you find all your workspaces. And I mentioned the feedback workspace in the very beginning. So the feedback workspace is a place where you can centralize all the feedback that arrives from different channels, be it your intercom, maybe manual notes from a sales call, maybe something that um, a, um, a marketing guy added via the Chrome extension, doesn't matter. You can send stuff to this inbox. And then what you want is that the product team or the product managers go through this feedback and categorize it so you kind of define the status and whether this is relevant and when something is relevant. So let's take this one that was sent over by um, a CS agent via the, our intercom integration. You can go into the specifics of this conversation that our CS agent had with the, with the customer and you can um, highlight the relevant parts here and then link it um, to an item that you have already on your product workspace. So you remember that we were looking at the push notifications a bit earlier. So this customer feedback is now linked to the push notifications item. And uh, you are now informing um, the product discovery and the strategic approach to product management by linking customer feedback um, to product work. And you now find that this a specific customer feedback here is now linked to the push notifications and there are also a few other feedbacks that have already been um, linked um, so there are currently four insights here and um, you can also find this number here and it gives you guidance and quick access to to the feedback when you're trying to understand uh, this opportunity or this specific um, solution that you're building here um, yeah, this is super powerful and we have dedicated feedback integrations um, and more to come um, that help you put feedback handling on autopilot and it essentially gives you um, a much smarter way to yeah like um, 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 give your customers and users a, 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 a seat on the on, on the on the table right because they are using the product on a daily basis and they know a lot of stuff and you want to make sure that um, you're listening and understanding what they need and that you're making uh, all these insights part of your discovery and uh, product strategy. Yeah, so obviously there's a lot more to the AirFocus product management platform and I would really recommend to sign up for a free trial and check it out and experience all the modularity that comes with fields, views, and apps. And um, if you have ever any questions, we have a few um, very helpful um, things here. And you can always talk to our um, people here at AirFocus. We usually respond within five minutes. So going back to um, the very presentation, Thank you all for uh, listening to this uh, webinar and um, you can scan this QR code right now to sign up for a 14 day trial or you can simply go to airfox.com and um, uh, if you want to learn more and if you want maybe sign up for our uh, newsletters and uh, look at our resources um, like the ebooks around product management, prioritization, road mapping, project growth and so on and so on. So. Thanks again and have a great day. See you soon. Bye-bye.